The main function of the GI tract, with the aid of organs such as the pancreas and the liver, is the digestion of food to meet the body's nutritional needs and the elimination of waste resulting from digestion. Adequate nutrition is required for proper functioning of the body's organs and other cells. The GI tract is susceptible to many health problems including structural or mechanical alterations, impaired motility, infection, and cancer. After this lesson you will be able to comprehend the anatomy and physiology of the GI system, perform focused physical assessment for patients with suspected or actual GI health problems, identify factors that place patients at risk for GI problems, teach pre-test and post-test care for diagnostic GI testing to patients and families, Explain and interpret common laboratory tests for patients with GI health problems. And identify general psychological and physiological responses to GI health problems. The GI system includes the GI tract consisting of the mouth, esophagus, stomach, small and large intestines, and rectum. The salivary glands, liver, gallbladder, and pancreas secrete substances into this tract to form the GI system. The GI tract is a hollow muscular tube surrounded by four tissue layers. The lumen or inner wall of the GI tract consists of four layers, the mucosa, the submucosa, the muscularis, and the serosa. Functions include secretion, digestion, absorption, motility, and elimination. Digestion is the mechanical and chemical process in which complex foodstuffs are broken down into simpler forms that can be used by the body. Absorption is carried out as nutrients are taken up by the circulatory system. The oral cavity contains the buccal mucosa, the lips, tongue, hard palate, soft palate, teeth, and salivary glands. The random facts are adults have about 32 permanent teeth. Saliva contains mucin and amylase which begins to break down of carbohydrates. The esophagus job is to move food from the pharynx to the stomach. The upper esophageal sphincter is closed at rest. The lower esophageal sphincter also is closed at rest to prevent reflux. The stomach has four anatomic regions, the cardia, the fundus, the body or corpus, and the antrum or pylorus. The pyloric sphincter separates the stomach and the duodenum. Parietal cells secrete hydrochloric acid, an intrinsic factor. Chief cells secrete pepsinogen. The pancreas is divided into the head, the body, and the tail. Exocrine part is about 80% of the pancreas and secrete enzymes that are needed for digestion of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. The endocrine is made up of islets of Langerhans with alpha cells producing glucagon and beta cells that produce insulin. The liver and gallbladder. The liver has more than 400 functions. The liver's three major functions are storage of vitamins and minerals, protection, uh, metabolism which breaks down the amino acids to remove ammonia and carbohydrate metabolism in storage and release of glycogen. Also temporarily stores fatty acids and triglycerides. It forms and secretes bile which is essential for fat breakdown. The gallbladder is a bulbous sac located under the liver. It's drained by cystic common bile duct and stores and concentrates bile. The small intestine is the longest and most convoluted portion of the digestive tract. It measures about 16 to 19 feet. It's composed of three areas, the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. The inner surface of the small intestine has a velvety appearance because of numerous mucous membrane finger-like projections. They are called the intestinal villi. The small intestine has three main functions, movement, digestion, and absorption. The large intestine extends about five or six feet in length. It's lined with columnar epithelium that has absorptive and mucous cells. 
The colon has four divisions, the ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, and the sigmoid colon. Functions are movement, absorption, and elimination. Intrinsic factor aids in the absorption of B12. Absence of the intrinsic factor results in pernicious anemia. Kupfer cells and vagocytic cells, part of the reticuloendothelial system, eat bacteria and the anemic red blood cells. The liver will detox potentially harmful compounds. Bile secretions increase in response to gastrin, secretin, and cholecystokinin. Secreted through the common bile duct into the duodenum through the sphincter of Odi. If the sphincter is closed, it is sent to the gallbladder for storage. Now that we have done a brief anatomy and physiology of the GI system, we're going to discuss the assessment portion. You want to know the patient history, their nutritional history, their family history and the genetic risk, you know, potentially for colon cancer. You want to assess for current health problems and any cultural differences that might affect their nutritional habits. You will also assess for pain. Use the PQRST method. P for precipitating or palliative, Q for quality or quantity, R for region or radiation, S for severity scale, and T for the timing. Your physical assessment will include auscultation, percussion, and palpation. You also want to take into consideration changes that are related to aging. These include a decrease in gastric hydrochloric acid and less absorption of essential minerals like iron, decreased peristalsis, constipation and impaction, distension and dilation of pancreatic ducts that change, and a decrease in the number and size of hepatic cells, which can lead to drug toxicity. Okay, you want to begin with inspection, then auscultation, then palpation. Why would you do it this way? Well, if you start with palpation, you may cause pain and then you're not going to be able to get the full inspection or even hear possibly what's going on through auscultation. So when you inspect, you will inspect the overall symmetry presence of discoloration or scarring, abdominal distension, bulging flanks, is the abdomen taut, do they have glistening skin? You also want to check for colon sign. This is ecchymosis around the umbilicus which indicates abdominal bleeding. What would you do if you see a bulging pulsating mass? Well, you want to tell the doctor right away. It could be an aneurysm. Use the diaphragm of the stethoscope because bowel sounds are usually high-pitched. Bowel sounds are created as air and flood move through the GI tract. It's usually about every 5 to 15 seconds. It's described as normal, hypoactive, or hyperactive. So what is the most reliable method of determining if the patient has a return of peristalsis after the abdomen surgery? Yes, that's correct. Passing gas. So what would you do if you heard a brute over their abdominal aorta? Of course, you tell the doctor right away and you don't want to palpate. This is done by the MD and APNs. The percussion notes heard are termed tympanic or high-pitched, loud, musical sound of an air-filled intestine or dull, medium-pitched, softer, thud-like sound over a solid organ. Determine the size and location of abdominal organs and assess for the presence of masses or tenderness. Light palpation and deep palpation are the differences. You want to note signs of rigidity. This could be peritoneal inflammation. Any areas of pain should be evaluated for rebound tenderness. This is known as Blumberg sign. It is done by fingers placed at a 90 degree angle in relation to the abdomen. The examiner pushes slowly and deeply, releasing quickly. Pain felt on release is a positive sign. 
question the patient about previous GI disorders or abdominal surgeries. Ask about prescription medications or over-the-counter medications that they are taken. One tool for assessing GI function is the nutritional metabolic pattern and the elimination pattern assessment that is found in chart 55-2 on page 1182 of your textbook. So now we're going to look at some diagnostic assessments. First, we're going to look at a CBC. In adults, GI bleeding is the most frequent cause of anemia. It is associated with cancer, peptic ulcer disease, and inflammatory bowel disease. Then we can look at the PT, the electrolytes, AST and ALT, the amylase, the lipase, uh, bilirubin, serum ammonia, uh, CA19-9, and CEA. A urine test, which you'll check for amylase and your bilinogen, and then stool test, which will include fecal occult blood test. You want to suggest collecting three samples from three separate bowel movements, and then avoid food with raw vegetables and fruits and red meat, uh, vitamin C rich foods, anticoagulants, and NSAIDs. They have to be discontinued for at least seven days. And then other tests such as ova and parasites, fecal fats, and uh, clostridium difficile, also known as C. diff. And for the upper GI and small bowel follow-through includes barium enemas, uh, the percutaneous transhepatic cholangiography, the endoscopy, the EGD, the ERCP, the enteroscopy, the colonoscopy, and the sigmoidoscopy. This will conclude the lesson of the assessment of the GI system. If you have any questions related to the content of this lesson, contact the instructor.